Good evening. It's very nice to see you again. And today I would like to show you some things that I need to work on. I have a little project that I need to do because I've been putting it off and, you know, I finally have time to do it. And my project is I have these two dresses. I love dresses. I didn't used to wear them, but a couple of years ago I, I found one that I really liked. And, um, and I got a lot of compliments. And people said, you know, you look really nice. You should, you should wear dresses more often. And I was at work, and normally I, I didn't wear dresses or skirts to work. And everybody said, you know, you look great. You should, you should dress like that more often. Um, so I started looking at dresses. And these are two that I like a lot. And um, I've only worn them a couple of times because I have a little problem. And I have the same problem with both dresses. Um, and these are some that I bought not too long ago. The problem is um, the straps. Here, this one has some little narrow straps. The straps are a bit too long, so it... Um, kind of gaps open and I'd have to put the back, you see the back here, I would have to put a little piece of dress tape on it and stick it to my skin to keep it from gapping open and, um, and looking bad. It's actually only on one side with this dress. It is on, um, I believe it was this side. No, I'm sorry, that was this side. This side, this side is okay. This one is not. For some reason, I think uh, this strap is a little bit longer, or something's different about it. But it's very pretty. I don't even know exactly what you call this type of print. Uh, it kind of reminds me of ocean waves, but then there's a flower. Very pretty flower. But it has these, these pretty swirls. And it's just... To me, it reminds me of the ocean, but I guess they're actually some sort of flower, but I think it's really pretty, and it has this print all over. It's not a very long dress, and it has an empire waist, which means it's, um, it's a very short waist, and it comes up higher on your waist than most things would. Uh, if you're not careful, sometimes they can look like maternity dresses, but, you know, I'm, no need for that. <clears throat> now, this is the first dress. It is, um, it's an Ann Taylor dress. Um, let me put this one, I'm going to move this one to the side for a minute. I'll show you my other one. And I actually like this one a little better. This one is just so cool. And it has very intense colors to it. It has, it has gray and royal blue, white. And most of it is black. The trim is black. Um, this one um, gaps open. And you can kind of see where I tried to fix that before, but it, uh, it didn't work too well. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this, something over here on this side. Now, I will tell you, I am not a seamstress. I am no professional by any means. This is just a little fix that I'm going to attempt to do so I can wear my dresses without constantly either applying dress tape or tugging at it and fixing it and adjusting it and being self-conscious about it all day. Because that's no fun. <laughs> I don't want to go to work, you know, wondering whether or not... Um, being inappropriate with my my clothing. So this is a really cute dress. I love this dress. It's very pretty. And, and you, you can wear all different kinds of jewelry with it. You could wear white or gray or blue or black or a combination. And you could just wear plain silver or gold or anything you like. And pretty much anything looks good with it. So I have two dresses with problems, and I believe 
my problem with the uh, the the gaps up here. Um, a lot of women have have the problem uh, from you know I've been hearing hearing women talk about it. Um, they're uh, <laughs> a little more gifted, I guess you can say, up top. So sometimes they have a hard time fitting into some shirts or dresses or even bathing suits because the top is not big enough. Well, that problem also applies to women on the other end of the spectrum. And our problem is that a lot of times, uh, because we don't feel that out as much, the straps are too long and they need to be shortened. Um, so that's what I want to do. I'm going to leave this aside and I will show you what I will use to fix this with. It's okay if this one gets wrinkled up. It doesn't. It doesn't wrinkle. It's made of polyester. I could wad it up in a ball and it would never wrinkle. So don't worry about that. The other one is more prone to wrinkling, but this one is, is not. So this is what I keep all my sewing stuff in. It's really high tech. <laughs> a really fancy uh, container. It's actually a food container and uh, I just used it to put my sewing things in. I've had this for probably 10 years. And it is a what is this? It is a Rubbermaid container with stain shield. And I guess if you put spaghetti sauce or something in it, it wouldn't turn it pink around the side. And we don't really have to worry about that when we have nothing in here but thread and scissors and stuff. It's uh, plastic. You can see through it. You can see all my things. Mm -hmm. And it makes a lovely sound. sound of tapping. I love to hear people like if they're writing, writing with a pencil on a piece of paper. The sounds that the pencil make on the paper is just lovely. Oh, it's so good. I love the sound of keyboards and the sound of people typing. I get, I get really good tingles from that. As long as they're doing it the right way, and I'm not really sure what the right way is, but when I hear it, I know it. <laughs> they're not typing too hard. They're not banging away on the keyboard, but I can I can still hear hear the sound of their typing. It's beautiful. It triggers me every time if they do it right. I'll stop what I'm doing and just listen, <laughs> which is not good when you're trying to get your work done. <laughs> I just can't avoid it. So, let's see what we've got. The lid pops right off. And uh, it's, it's just in disarray. Everything's just thrown in here. I have this little guy. I use a lot. You can use this to thread your needle. And it's just a little piece of very thin aluminum. It's, it looks like a little coin, but it's, it's not, and it bends very easily, so I don't want to bend it. And I, I keep several of them around because I don't know if you can see, but this little skinny piece of metal comes undone. After a while, it will just pop out, and then it won't work anymore. So I try to keep three or four of these around. Sometimes I'll buy a whole sewing kit just to get one or two of these. <laughs> so I keep him handy. If I'm going to need that. Put him right there. For the moment, we're just going to leave him there. Alright, and 
I have other needles, but usually when I go to get needles, it comes out of this little pack. And it was made in England. And apparently I broke this off at some point. <clears throat> Sorry. I've had these for a long time. I just, there's room for more. If I wanted to add some to it, you can just stick them in these little holes. And I just, usually I'll just pinch it. And whichever one comes out, that's the one that I pick. I'm probably picking the same one every time. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not really too particular. It doesn't matter. So, these are my needles. Some are longer and thicker. Some are smaller and thinner. And we're going to set these to the side. And we have to figure out which dress we want to do first. Actually, because the dress that we pick will determine the thread that we use because I have lots of colors in here. I have maybe blue, I have white, red, brown, yellow, lots of colors, lots of choices. This is black. I use this a lot. And in this little thing I have extra fasteners, safety pins, just little odds and ends that might come in handy at some point. Yeah, all these colors. I have colors for everything just about, or at least it's close enough to do. So, I think we will start with the second dress. So I'm going to need black. And here's the black. It is it's interesting to me how thread always looks like it's a hundred years old, even the label on it. Um, this is Excel polyester, made in the USA. And it looks like there used to be something back here, but not anymore. But the labels seem, it just seems to me that the labels always look kind of old fashioned. Like if you pick any one of these, they just, I don't know, they just something about them, they just look old. And they're, but they're really not. I mean, I've, I mean, I've had, I haven't had these that long. They're not that old. <laughs> but they, their little labels just always look really old to me. <laughs> and I guess they figure it works just fine. There's no reason to change, so they don't. Okay, so we're going to use black. I'm going to set that aside. Here's my thread. And we're going to get the dress. I don't know how this is going to work doing it in front of a, my phone, but we'll see. Alright, so, <clears throat> this would be, this would be the right side. And what I did, you can see here how it's like a, a little zigzag, like a Z. It's like the letter Z. Um, all I did, and it's really, actually, let's see here. I should have probably done this on the back. It wouldn't be so obvious, but um, I, don't, I don't even remember doing this, but apparently I did because I, yeah, no professional did this. It, it looks it's like an amateur did it. It was me. I just, um, see here on this side, it looks nice and smooth. And the seam is nice and straight. And we don't have the little zigzag where the fabric has been folded and sewn together. And that's what I'm going to do over here. And on this side, you can see I already did it. Because I really love this dress and I wanted to be able to wear it. Unfortunately, uh, it's still giving me problems. So, I'm going to do the other side today. And this would be the left side. So we're going to gather it like that after we get the needle threaded and ready. Get the thread and get everything prepared. We're going to fold it like that and make sure it's as straight as it can be and looks okay. And then we're just going to use our needle and thread and we're just going to sort of anchor it down right here. So that will make this part shorter. So hopefully it won't, you know, gap open and fall off my shoulder or, you know, look too big. And 
then I can wear this again and hopefully I don't have any problems. So, the first thing we do is pick our needle. And it doesn't really matter either any of these. This one's the one that I, as I said, I think this one always comes out. I think it must be the thinnest or it's in a hole that's a little bigger than the others. And I don't, I'm not too particular. I just grab them and pull out whatever comes out. And this one is eager to do the job. So we'll, we'll let him handle this. So I'm done with this for the moment. So I'll put it aside. And when I get done, I'll just stick it back in there. So it'll be ready next time. Right. So, I'm going to put the needle down right here. And now we're going to get the thread ready. Oh, one more thing we need out of our box. <laughs> I love this. I have this little tiny pair of scissors. Look how little they are. They're adorable. <laughs> They're so cute. I keep these in my box right here so I don't have to run and find scissors every time I need to cut a piece of thread. I don't always have scissors handy. So, put that there. We have to figure out how much thread we're going to need. And I'm going to double the thread over. So I'm really going to need twice as much as if I did not double it. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. Um, and this is very simple. This is something anybody could do. So I'm, again, I'm not a professional. I'm not, you know, trained to do anything like this. This is just stuff I've figured out over the years. My mom showed me how to sew on a button, and that's all she ever showed me about sewing. And uh, actually, I'm going to do that for you in this video, too. I forgot to mention that. I'm sorry. I'm going to show you how to sew on a button. But we'll get to that later. Right now we need to concentrate on this dress. Yeah, nothing else. Just this. It deserves our full attention. So here's the thread. Now I get the thread off. I take my finger. I put it. There's a hole right in the middle. I put my finger here. And my finger come in the middle. I grab it. And I pull. And I try to give myself a little extra. It's better to have too much than too little. I hold it tight with my fingers. See, it's coming down. I'm holding it. Now take my scissors. They're not terribly sharp, so. And I cut it. Here's the part that I just cut. So I'm done with the scissors and the thread. So I'm going to hold my piece of thread and put my scissors back in the box. And I put the thread back in the box. Now, this is when this little guy comes in needle and there's the eye I'm trying to get it to focus there's the eye of the needle let's see if I can do this while looking through my phone screen uh, can I do it there we go I got it in <laughs> I got it through now see it's very flexible this metal is very flexible and that is so it can fit through the eye of your needle you want to do this before you do anything with the thread. So now, instead of having to fit the thread through that little tiny hole, we have a bigger one to work with. So we get our thread, get down to the end of it. See, my needle is just swinging, don't worry about that. I'm going to put the thread through that hole. No, oh, come here. Okay, now you can see it's through there. You don't have to pull it through very far. You can just pull through a few inches or whatever you like. Now, take your needle, grab this, and you're going to pull it. You're going to pull it through the needle, the eye of the needle, just like that. And we're all done with this. I'm going to put it back. And voila, you have threaded a needle. Now, when I said I was going to double it over, what I meant was, here's the short piece. This is what I just pulled through. This is the longer piece. What I'm going to do 
Let's take the shorter piece and pull it. And I'm going to pull it until both sides are the same length, roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect. So, what we're going to do, so now it's like you have two pieces of thread. It's going to be kind of like doing the work twice as fast. I've got two pieces. It's this, this piece of thread is doubled over. I don't think that's a technical term. I think I just came up with it just now. I never really had a name for it, but when I sew buttons, I do the same thing. Okay. Now, we'll come back to the dress. And we have to find the piece that we want to fix. Right here. It looks lovely, unfortunately. I'm, again, I'm not a professional, so it won't look this good when I get done. But at least I'll be able to wear it. That's the main thing. Okay. So, we're going to fold it over so it looks like a V. You should be able to see what I'm doing, and my camera is not cooperating with me. Oh, good. Okay. That's better. So we're going to fold it under like that. Okay. Now, when I work, I work from the back. So you're not going to start by sticking the needle in in the front. This is the front of the dress. I want all my thread to be in the back, like the piece sticking out and the piece when I'm finished, so I can tie them together, and it won't show, <clears throat> sorry, it won't show when I'm wearing it, so I'm going to have to hold it. This is the hardest part when you first start. This is the most difficult because you have to keep it together, you have to keep it straight. It'll get easier as we sort of anchor it down with some thread, so I'm going to stick it through. It's going to come through the front. It's kind of difficult to push through because that's quite a bit of fabric and stitching right there. So I'm going to pull it through. Not all the way, of course. You want to leave some hanging out here so when you're done, you can um, you can tie a knot. Now, now, <clears throat> now we're on the front of the dress. And my little thread is sticking out right here. We're going to go back in. I don't know if you can see, but this is where the seam is, but it's black and it doesn't show up too well. There's a seam there. So we're going to stick it through again, um, being careful not to poke your finger. It happens to everybody. So just say ow and move on. <laughs> That's what I do. Or dang it. Sometimes I say dang it. I get mad at myself, kind of like I burn. When I burn myself in the kitchen, I get mad and I say dang it because I know better. And I'm old enough to know how to cook without burning myself, but I still do. And you just keep going back and forth. And you want to keep an eye on this back piece of thread sticking out. You want to keep it straight because sometimes when you're going back and through with the, with the thread, it'll get wound up and tangled up in it. You don't want it to do that. Just back and forth, back and forth. Kind of keeping an eye on how straight it is. You have to push kind of hard. But you can do it. And not to be too crass, but um, I figure doing stuff like this is cheaper than a boob job. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's late. Um, a little punchy. I apologize. <laughs> I'm not trying to be vulgar. But it is. <laughs> it is cheaper. Alright. So, I've gone all the way across. And I'm going to start working my way back. And, you know, if you try this and it looks bad, you can always come through and cut this out. I mean, you can always take this out. If You can undo this anytime you want to. 
If you decide you don't like it and you want to take it to a seamstress or somebody to get it done professionally, you can pull this right out. It's no problem at all. You can cut these little stitches out with no problem. So this is not, it's not permanent. It's not undoable. Well, I mean, it is undoable. It's not un undoable, which is a kind of convoluted double negative. But anyway, you can undo it. That's good. So now, see now, I'm back where I started. So I'll find my locust thread, which apparently got bound up even though I tried to keep it from doing that. So I've kind of got them back together in the same place. And all I do is a little double knot, double granny knot, or Probably has some kind of name, I don't know. It's nothing fancy. I'm just going to tie these two ends off. And, you know, you don't have to do it in any special way. Just tie it so they kind of stay together. And this is not cooperating with me. Tie it in a double knot. I'm going to tie it one more double knot just to be sure. and tied off. So, I'm going to get my scissors again. And I'm going to cut it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not going to show when you have the dress on. There's, apparently, I messed up a little bit. And, and I'm not even worried about that because that's not going to show either. <clears throat> so, now you have this extra thread. You have the piece that you cut which I think I just dropped. I just dropped black thread on a black dress. No, it's, it's sticking to this. Okay. So I have this piece that I cut, and I have the leftover thread on the needle. I'll pull it out. So I have all this loose thread. What I do is I want to keep all my pieces together so I can throw them all away when I'm done, and they don't end up who knows where. I take the lid to my container right here, and I just lay them on the lid. And when I get done with the other dress and sewing on the button, I have all my little bits right here and I can throw them all away at the same time. So I'm going to keep that where I know where it is. I'm going to set my needle down where I'll find it. And I won't find it by stepping on it or sitting on it. I'm going to put it right over to the side. There. And this is the side that I just did here. And this is the side I did earlier. And, um, at least they match now, kind of. So, I won't be able to tell whether or not this helps until I wear it again. Maybe I'll wear it to work on Monday. I'll put it on Monday morning and walk around in it for a little bit and see if it fits any better. And I'll be able to wear my pretty dress again. Yeah, it's a pretty black piece here. This is about midway down on the dress, and then it has a wide black hem, and it is so cute. This dress is so adorable. I love it. Okay, um, hopefully now we're done with that one. I'm going to put it aside, and I'm going to bring back the other dress. My swirly ocean flower dress. Um, this one is a little different, and I honestly don't know the best way to do this. Um, I'm afraid it's going to show, it's going to be obvious, but the thing is, this dress I bought primarily to wear to work, um, and I don't really feel comfortable wearing a, dr a dress um, when I put it on. It looks like something you would wear out on the beach or something, and it, to me, it just feels a little bit too informal to wear it, just as it is what I usually would do. I, um, probably wear just a white cardigan, a very thin uh, knit cardigan type top over it to cover my shoulders. So this isn't going to show anyway as long as I have that on. So what I've done, and this is the one that's given me trouble, so I'm going to come to the back. This is a little seam in the back on the strap. I think what I'll do 
I'm just going to fold it like that so that when we're done, hopefully it won't show up too much. It might, but again, if, if I do it and I don't like it or it looks weird or it fits weird, it doesn't matter. I can come in, take a pair of scissors, snip, 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 and pull, and it'll be right back like it is right now. It's no big deal. Okay, so I look at it first and decide kind of what I want to do. Okay, I think I know what I want. I want it like that. Just like that. Now we need to decide what kind of thread to use, and that's a little tricky because this dress is not one solid the part we're working on is not one solid color like the other dress. We've got uh, one shade of blue here, another here. We've got black. We've got off-white and more blue here. So it's a little tricky. Actually, we're lucky though. We're kind of lucky because where I'm thinking about sewing, right across here, it's all one solid color. And it's kind of a, a periwinkle blue or a slate blue. So what I need to do, keeping in mind what color this is, it's this color here. What I need to do is come look in my container of thread and figure out which one closely matches, most closely matches that color. So I'm going to take out these big ones because they're not the right color anyway and they're just in the way. And I've got a whole rainbow of colors in here. I, and just from first glance, I want to say it'll be this one or maybe this one you might not be real you might might not be able to tell but they're very very slightly different this one has more of a shine to it and this one's kind of a matte finish um i'm gonna try this one just eyeballing it i think it would be this let's check Ooh, uh, nope i'm off look the thread has more of a purplish color than i thought it's too purple compared to this Let's see if we have anything that comes closer. How about this one? Oh, that's better. I think that's better. Okay, let's come back and look. Let's see what else. We have the other blue, that one. We have this one. But, no, let's do turquoise. Let's try. This one? Hmm, no. Too light. Okay. So, I think that's close enough. Nobody's going to inspect it closely enough for it to matter that much. I just wanted to get it as close as possible. And that's why I have all these colors. So, this one it looks like I've never used. 